He actually wanted to be on Flip so bad. He was supposed to be in Flip Sorry, and it got so close to happening that Johnny Rotten actually filmed an intro for him for that video. <laughs> What's up guys, my name is Levi and this is Shred Shop connecting you to skateboarding and today we're doing something special, 14 things you didn't know about flip skateboards. Today we're going to talk about where the brand came from, why they were so iconic, team members, lawsuits and so much more. And as we always do, our 14th point is our absolute favorite, it is the most mysterious point. Stick around to find out. Death box. To talk about Flip, we got to first talk about Deathbox Skateboards. It was a board brand started in 1987 in the UK. It was started by three friends and skateboarders, Graham McEachran, Jeremy Fox, and Duncan Holton. They released one video and it was super popular in the UK. It was called Spirit of the Blitz. And it featured team riders Sean Goff and Paul Robson. They later added a young skater from Liverpool named Jeff Rowley as well as other skateboarders, Tom Penny, Rune Glyphberg, and Andy Scott, to the Deathbox skateboard team. Jeff Rowley. Geoff Rowley. Jeremy Fox adds a young Liverpool kid to the team. You guys might recognize him. His name, Jeff Rowley. At that time, Jeff Rowley was blowing up as a street skater in the UK scene. He was getting into magazines. In 1994, Jeremy Fox and Ian Deacon announced that they are leaving the UK and they are changing the name of the brand. They're moving to America and they're starting with their new brand name, Flip Skateboards. A couple years earlier, they made a little promotional video called Long Overdue. And they actually did it under the name Flip Skateboards before they officially changed the name from Deathbox to Flip Skateboards. In 1994, Jeremy Fox, Ian Deacon, and Jeff Rowley land in California. Rowley said he had $154 in his pocket when he got off the flight coming to America, and his first check from Flip Skateboards was for a whopping $50. At that time, Rolly said that he was living in an apartment with 13 other dudes and he was eating ramen noodles for dinner. After Rolly is in America for just a couple weeks, he ends up going and skateboarding with Dave Swift from Transworld Skateboarding Magazine, and they go out skateboarding and he gets a photo of a 360 flip, which ends up being on the cover of Transworld Skateboarding Mag. It wasn't long after that Flip Skateboards gained a lot of popularity in America. And in turn, Rolly started to see his flip skateboard checks grow and grow and grow from 50 to $55. Tom Penny. Tom Penny joined the brand when it was still called Deathbox. He was one of their original riders and still to this day, he rides for flip skateboards. Tom Penny is known as one of the most naturally gifted and talented skateboarders on the planet earth. When he came to America, he blew people's minds with his style and his consistency. It was all, his name was everywhere. And all in one moment, he left and it was almost like he disappeared off the face of the earth. People didn't know where he was. This is why around Tom Penny's name, there are so many rumors and so much folklore about how he has impacted skateboarding and what he's completed. When he left the United States, he actually left for over six years. And he came back only once to visit for the Flip Sorry premiere. Flip Sorry. Flip Sorry was one of the most hyped up and iconic movies of its generation. When the video did come out, they added Mark Appleyard as well as a ton of other writers. And it had standout parts from guys like Bastian Salabanzi, Art Osari, and of course, Jeff Rowley. The intros, the transitions for all the different parts in Flip Sorry was actually done by Johnny Rotten from the Sex Pistols. It's also funny and important to note that he didn't want to use fake alcohol or fake booze when he was filming it and he was drinking. So he actually drank real beer and real hard liquor. And so he did all of the filming completely plastered. <laughs> no, he's hiding in France and it took the likes of me to tell ya. After that, he was also spotted many places in different celebrity events wearing flip sorry t-shirts. In this video, we see Ali Bulala try the famous Leon 25 stare in France. He goes back to the stair set twice. The first time, he tries it once and he focuses his board, completely obliterates it. The second time, he comes back, he tries it two different times, but it's raining. He ollies down, doesn't make it. The second time, he all goes to ollie and he slips and he ends up just jumping down the 25 stair, landing on his heels and exploding his feet. 
he gets so messed up. He says he can't walk for two months after that. After the video comes out, Jeff Rowley wins Skater of the Year. The following year, Art Osari wins Skater of the Year. At this time, through these couple of years, the Flip Riders are in every magazine and they're dominating covers and they are well known everywhere you go. PJ Ladd. PJ Ladd is announced to the Flip Skateboards team between the release of Flip Story and Flip Really Story. You can see him riding some flipboards in his wonderful, horrible life part. He actually wanted to be on Flip so bad, he was supposed to be in Flip Sorry, and it got so close to happening that Johnny Rotten actually filmed an intro for him for that video. It didn't actually happen for him to get on the board brand because his board sponsor at that time threatened legal action, causing him to stay with them instead of switching to Flip. Really Sorry. Really Sorry comes out not that long after, and it blows up, keeping Flip at the very center of the skateboard universe. Mark Appleyard has last part in Really Sorry. Then he wins Skater of the Year, meaning that Flip has won Skater of the Year three out of four years in a row. Extremely Sorry. After a bit of a hiatus, Extremely Sorry comes out. Extremely Sorry comes out in 2009, and they add team riders David Gonzalez, Bob Bernquist, Ben Nordberg, Curran Caples, Lance Mountain, Louis Lopez, Luan Oliveira, Rodrigo TX, and Shane Cross. Yeah. Shane Cross. Shane Cross was a young gun coming up on the scene, blowing up. He was ripping and he had the sickest style. He even nose grinded El Toro first or second try in the dark. He rode for Volcom, he rode for Flip. He had great style. One day in Australia, Shane and team rider and really good friend Ali Bulala were partying and they got wasted. They hopped on their moped and they were screwing around and they drove into a wall, causing a major accident. That day, we lost Shane Cross. He passed away. Ali Bulala, after that accident, spent the better part of a year in a hospital. And after leaving the hospital, actually had to go and spend some time in prison for manslaughter. As tragic as that is, hopefully this is a good reminder that we all need to drink responsibly. Ardo sorry. In Flip Story, Art Osari's intro is a cartoon. It's of him feebling a huge rail. If you've watched it, you know what I'm talking about. He feebles, he hits a hole in the rail, he sticks, and he flies to the bottom and hits his head. The reason it's car in cartoon is because he was just warming up, so the camera wasn't out yet. But the aftermath of that is that he hits his head and he's unconscious and he's vomiting everywhere. After that, he ends up in the hospital for a few days with a severe concussion. After having standout part in all the Sorry videos and winning Skater of the Year in 2001, Ardo Sorry decides to leave Flip and start riding for Alien Workshop. As he's leaving the team, he puts out a statement saying that part of the reason that he left the team was how torn apart everyone was over Shane Cross passing. After leaving Flip for Alien Workshop, he puts out a part in Minefield. After that, in 2011, he comes back and he goes to Jeremy Fox and Jeff Rowley and he says, Flip is my home, it's my family. They welcome him back with open arms. With that, they release an ad, it says, home is where the heart o is. Mark Appleyard. Mark Appleyard quit Habitat to ride for Flip originally. Then he put out three standout parts in all of the Sorry videos. Also, he won Skater of the Year during this time. He was on the cover of basically every magazine on earth. And in 2010, he decided to leave the team to go and join the Element Squad. Element Squad! It's good to note, if you've never seen Appleyard skate, he has one of the best styles in the world. When he pops, his arms barely come above his waist and never go above his shoulders. Also, we love him because he's Canadian. Rowley leaves. In October of 2015, Jeff Rowley shakes up the whole skateboard world and when he announces that he's leaving Flip Skateboards. He's been there since the beginning, when it was still called Deathbox Skateboards, and He's actually had ownership in the company since 2010. It was a real shock to the skateboard world when he left. He was a huge part of the team, as well as the aesthetics of the company. No one represented Flip better than Jeff Rowley did. During Rowley's time at Flip, he had standout parts in all their videos, as well as he won Skater of the Year, he was a part of the Tony Hawk Pro Skater video games, which were a big deal, and he actually has a bronze statue of himself out front of the Staples Center in LA. It's of him 50-50ing the hubba. He was the first one to skate the Staples Center hubba. 
If you don't know what the Staples Center is and you're not from there, it's actually where the LA Lakers play and the Los Angeles Kings play. It's a big deal. Modern flip. In 2012, they released the Weight of the World video, and that gave shine to a ton of new flip riders. This video features Jeff Rowley, Kern Caples, Louis Lopez, Matt Berger, Ben Nordberg, and a bunch more. This video and this year, David Gonzalez also wins Skater of the Year. The modern flip team that we know today includes still two original team riders that rode for Deathbox, Tom Penny and Rune Glyphberg. It also includes legends like Lance Mountain and Ardo Sari. They also have a good group of new riders, David Gonzalez, Alex Majerus, Luan Oliveira, and another Canadian, Matt Berger. And that's just to name a few. Chi Chin Chong. In 1996, Flip is doing a ton of kind of comic book art for their graphics, and Tom Penny asks if they can do a Chi Chin Chong one for his graphic. The graphic comes out and it explodes. It is super popular, but unfortunately, it wasn't licensed. After a while, Chi Chin Chong actually find out about this. Turns out though, Cheech was okay with it. And so Flip decided to slip him some royalties over the years. So it's funny to note that Cheech has actually been on Flip's payroll ever since the year 2000. In 2012, which is 16 years later from the original release of Cheech and Chong, they get the licensing rights and they do a full rollout of Cheech and Chong swag. This is still one of their most popular boards to date. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is 14 things you didn't know about flip skateboards. We're from Shred Shop, connecting you to skateboarding. Stay tuned for our comment of the week. All right, so here's our comment of the week. It's a real spicy one, if I do say so myself. It's from our buddy, Wayne K. He says, what do I get if I show up to your shop? Let's stop right there. First of all, Wayne, you're not welcome. Right back into it. You're gonna give me one of those whack-ass shirts? All right, Wayne, definitely not welcome back because I have the sickest style in the whole world. Have a good night, guys.